I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. I know I can't sing for nothing, but we hot die times, guys. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Lord, guys, I had to do it. I had to do it. I had to use that as an intro. Because um, I am. I'm really excited. This tank is really taking me by surprise. And I must say, what I mean by taking me by surprise is that this rock, the diatoms came in, and it came in fast and hard. And it was really, really dark. The sand bed, the whole nine yards. Now, I probably should have, you know, videotaped and showed a section of that as well. Um, obviously, I didn't. I've been really trying to get things done. But here we are. And I must say that the diatoms that came in, they came out as fast as they came in. Now, there's still diatoms here. It's just that it's really lightened up quite a bit. Um, also, I must apologize real quick and let you guys know. I did a live stream um, the other day and of me fragging corals and stuff like that for those that were able to make it appreciate you guys hanging out uh, and asking tons of questions about you know some of that and I will at some point be doing a video on that so a proper video of fragging I just got very frustrated I couldn't get the right angle that I wanted and trying to frag and touch the phone with uh, fish goo and everything, coral uh, goo and whatever. And I saw so I ended up just saying forget it. I actually stopped that night and actually the next day did a live stream for that. But what I'm saying is I also need to apologize for um, I didn't record me going to the LFS. Okay, so why did I go to the LFS? I picked it up. I wanted some, first off, I wanted coralline algae, so I needed to find a chunk out of a, a system that I know that was clean and stuff like that. So I went to a good LFS that does a very good job. I've actually took you guys there on my motorcycle and my car and stuff like that. It's called Triton Marine. So I went there to find some uh, coralline algae. I found a nice little plug that had coralline algae and actual sponge on it. And the coralline algae is really thick and plating, and I was like, yeah, I need a piece of that. So he snipped me off a piece of that. I brought it back. I cut it into threes, three little pieces, and um, put the one with the sponge on it down in the sump, a piece in here, and a piece in my quarantine slash frag system. But I also bought a couple, like three trochus snails and two nerite snails that I did put in here, and the uh, trochus snails had that nice plating uh, coralline algae on their shells. So hopefully that's enough to actually get this thing and we'll see how soon and how fast that this goes on. Also, real quick, I'll put together a couple little clips of um, obviously what's new on this aquarium. Have you guys seen what's new? Actually, what I've done different? Anybody? That's right, right here. We ended up putting on two uh, XR15s, for you guys know that I did a live stream on this aquarium as well, as far as par. We had about 150 par at the very top of that rock work there, not, but now we have about 150 par with those lights. I actually separated on one of two 15s. I could have put an XR30 or two XR30s there. I thought that that would be too much and a waste of money. Um, I did two 15s. If you see these radios, they're about uh, four inches apart. As far as the pucks, they give a big, big bang, you know, as far as par because of the overlapping. So they're going to, you're going to obviously get uh, even more penetration of par, higher number of par, this setup versus one, uh, single one of these. 
but I didn't want to spread them too far apart. So these are four, I made this 10. So I went six inches above what they normally, one would do. So I could still get that, but I've also got these, these like these uh, radions here that are actually chopping and hitting and getting good par halfway up that rock line. So just without these lights, we were 50 par at the top with just this light. So we needed a little bit more oomph and help in that area. I could have probably left it and used it just as low light corals, but as you guys can see the canopy of light, it was off here. You can visually see it, that it didn't have any light there. It was getting light, but you can visually see that it wasn't proper lit. That did bother me, so we obviously fixed the issue. I painted it, I got a little piece over here. On the other side, I got a touch up. I just haven't had time to paint that little piece. But as you guys can see, it is rocking and rolling. Now the question is, what do I do next? What would be the next thing you would like to see me do? Me personally, I'm actually stuck between adding corals or fish. I don't want to rush it, but I need to know what my next move is. Now, I do believe that this aquarium has been cycled, uh, cycling now. I actually put salt on the 17th of last month. I forget when I used Dr. Tim's one and only in this aquarium. But not only did I use Dr. Tim's, I did put some fricks up in here as well, and um, a mixture of pop labs as well. I'll just be 110% honest. Um, I did utilize both of those, their products as well with Dr. Tim's because I want a diversity in bacteria. I can't tell you just like you can't tell me what all is in this bacteria. Dr. Tim's been around a long time. I know some of you guys are on the, you know, with Fritz and stuff like that, but to be quite honest, um, I think uh, Fritz has been around longer than Dr. Tim's. Uh, to be quite honest, they've been around a long time. Uh, maybe some of you guys realize that or didn't realize that, but they have. Um, but the thing is, when it comes to these bacterias or anything that goes into our aquarium, you and I should know or understand that we do not know what's in any of it. Um, some of them do put what they put in there, but they're not giving up all their uh, secret sauce. That's what makes their product unique from other people. So everybody has their own little secret sauce um, that makes them known for why people buy their products. Me, because I don't know, I'm not gonna sit up here and act like I do. You know what? Well, guess what? I'll put uh, a bunch of different people's stuff in here at one time. It's beneficial bacteria in a bottle. I've used Dr. Tim's in the past. Um, I'm new to the Fritz stuff and Pilot Lab as well. I'm new to both of those. So I've heard everybody's side. I've actually did a little research on what people are saying about everybody's product. And you know what? It's like anything else. Some people enjoy it. Some people think somebody else is better. I'm not going to, I'm going to use all three. I don't know who's what. I know what Dr. Tim's does. I've used it. I've never had a problem with it, uh, to be quite honest. But for this one, I said, you know what? Let's pour a couple different people's bacteria in here. And that's what I did. Maybe, maybe that's going to help me in the long run. I have no idea. Is it going to hurt? No, it's bacteria in the bottom. Um, and bacteria is bacteria. So it is what it is. Just wanted to um, say that as well. But the thing is, I just need to know where I stand with myself. Meaning, what am I going to do next? I'm really debating on this whole fish or coral. Maybe you guys have a different suggestion. Maybe maybe you guys want uh, some cleanup crew. I don't know. I'm not really a big fan of cleanup crew. I do like um, choker snails, uh, narite snails, but mainly a lot of choker snails. Uh, I do like choker snails. Personally, I think they're just more hardier. At the end of the day, they can upright themselves. They can fix, you know, whatever. 
So let me know, what do you guys think? Should I go ahead and start adding fish? Understand that I do have, I will um, be doing something special with the fish. I know a lot of you guys want to know how I'm going to load so many fish at one time because I have mentioned that what I want to do is get a lot of the smaller fish first, get those in here, get those settled in, finicky fish, whatever. I'd uh, like to be able to even put a copper band in here and let it really do its thing. And then obviously add all the tanks, letting them be the last fish going in. Um, even though some tanks don't mess with a lot of little fish, uh, they're just way more aggressive, uh, aggressive. So therefore, any finicky fish that I might want to add at a later date uh, may not do so well because of how the tanks move and act and stuff like that. So that's where I'm at. Don't really want to drag this out. Uh, by the way, hopefully you enjoyed the little clip of me actually, me and my son doing this that I put in this video as well. Uh, putting this uh, together before we hung it and stuff like that. So guys, show the love. Hope to see you guys on the next video. And with that being said, this is Rico Rico's Aquariums. Till next time, peace.